Um, I think we can now move on to Stack Overflow. <laughs> I believe his presentation has been uploaded. Um, if we can just pull up the Disco Co-op presentation, that'll be lovely. Um, to that end, um, I think uh, we have a bit more time on the panel um, since Viraj went for went on about 12 to 13 minutes. I think that's actually what we need to speak about this. I would like to extend the same time to our other panelists as well. Um, so please, um, if you do want to add more content, uh, we have about 13 minutes to go. Um, okay. Can everyone online see the presentation as well? All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, and thank you to the technical team for fixing the issue. Thanks. I am going to talk to you about DISCO, which stands for Distributed Cooperative Organizations. So DISCO is not so easy to define with a few words, but in a nutshell, it's a pattern-based methodology for small groups of four to 20 people to co-create social and environmental value together while earning a livelihood. In this way, it puts activism where I think it belongs, which is the workplace. And that's an explanation, but in our experience in workshops, when people really get it, is when they can relate it to their own experience, to things that they're already doing or things that they would like to do. So begging your patience, I'm going to give you three coordinates three possible definitions of DISCO to ignite your imagination so you can think about how you would apply it. So the first of this is that DISCO, yes. Yeah, can you hear okay in the room? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, it's better. And again, I want to thank the invisible labor of the interpreters who are making this possible for the whole conference. And I think the girls will serve a little cheer. Okay, so back on point. This go is a brand. And brands are really fascinating things. The memetic complexes that use design, artistry, and the social sciences to incite us to buy and desire things and to identify with them. Brands sell you certain things. So as a brand, what does Disco sell you? Disco sells you anti-capitalist, decolonial, and intersectional feminist futures. This is the kind of thing that I want to see on the label. And these are the values that we want to promote. Now as a brand, it's really inclusive because Disco is also an open source conspiracy. If you're familiar with open source, this is a way to create code and knowledge that is freely shared, that you can permissionlessly copy, paste, and adapt for your own. So in the case of software, you can take this program and you can adapt it to your needs and environments. So this go encourages you to steal it and to modify it for your own specificities. So if this is an open source conspiracy, what is the purpose? The purpose is obviously to take over the world, because we might as well. I mean, if you see the state that the world is in, why not try something new? And it's a way for disaggregated economic alternatives to be able to create large-scale network effects and become economic counterpower. And you know, you might think, oh, this is finally open source conspiracy. What's the potential of this? And just to throw out some pointers, Pre-pandemic, the cooperative movement had an annual turnover of 3.5 trillion US dollars, which was the same as the market capitalization of Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, and Microsoft. Now, you have to distinguish between turnover, which is real goods and services, and market cap, which is fictitious speculative numbers in the abstract. Of course, post-pandemic, the Silicon Valley Big Five have grown exponentially, but just a few years ago, the power of cooperatives was the same, but not articulated in the same way. It's also, if you're familiar with the Gibson Gray and Iceberg, of like this is the visible part of the economy, and then you have the large part of the iceberg, what if we turned it over? What if we made the invisibilized community economies and the interactions that we have every day that undergird the so-called productive economy, what if we made them more commonplace? So 
for that to happen, we need to change the rules of the game. So happily, Disco is also an economic life action role playing game. If you're not familiar with LARPs, this is somewhere where people, oh, thank you. <laughs> this is where people get together and they dress up in funny costumes and they inhabit new realities. And the fact is, though mainstream or neoliberal economics may call itself a science, this is all made up. This is all created. And if we're playing a game, this is a game that we and the majority of the people in the world have not consented to. And you're forcibly uh, made to play this game either by economic exclusion or violence. But it's a game. So how about we can create a new one? And this code can serve as the playbook for new games. And I use the plural because it's designed for these small groups to have conversations on how to practice new notions of values and alternative economics. And to talk to other groups who are doing something similar and to federate into large-scale coalitions. We also say that disco is kind of like syncretic economics. In syncretism, in religion, you're pretending to do one thing while you're actually doing another, which is more subversive and closer to your heart. So sure, in a disco, you can be a co-op, you can have a legal interface where you provide goods and services, you take in money, and you're paying taxes. But maybe you're working towards this anti-capitalist, decolonial, and intersectional feminist end while operating on the marketplace and creating a livelihood for your members. So ultimately, this is a conversation about value. And here we come to this tricky distinction between values and value. Um, you know, what we hold there and what we actually measure and encourage. And value is not easy to define. Here I'm riffing on, I'm not doing the slides, am I? There we are. What? Oh no, yes, value. Okay, so from David Graeber, value can be considered as a process guiding our collective behavior which includes production, what we make, recording, how we value it, how we tally, and actualization, where does value become manifest. And often the conversation has been, you know, when the revolution comes, who's going to appropriate the surplus value? The working class, the precariat. But that to me is still working through the rules of the old game. What we want to do is to have a conversation to co-determine what value is actually is and how to get there. How to make new processes guiding our collective behavior. Towards what? I love uh, something that I think that everybody here will easily understand. We want to guide our collective behavior towards care. And if it's tricky to define value, it's even trickier to define care. I'll go with Toronto and Fisher. Seen as a species activity that includes everything we do to maintain, continue, and repair our world. Capitalism, thank you. I'm doing like mine and the other ones at the same time. Capitalism is actively anti-care. Um, but I think that care needs to be seen, valued, performed and received equitably and rewarded. So with all this in mind, Disco can help us reimagine value in action through the workplace. To do this, we propose something called governance modeling, which is where groups get together to figure out their economics within their group and have interfaces to, with other groups. And to do that, one of the patterns that we offer is three value streams. This is a very, well, it's a nice but complex infographic. I'm just going to talk about the value streams. They are livelihood work, which is the work that is paid by the marketplace, that is recognized by mainstream economics. And then there is love work, which is usually activist or volunteer work. Doing activism is a huge privilege. If you have three jobs and you're caring for six kids, you're not going to do much activism at 11 at night. So we want to be able to reward that. And care work within the workplace for us is all the work that makes this possible. Now care work, another tricky topic, within capitalism is both abstracted upwards. So you have this managerial coordinator class that gets really high salaries and often acts on behalf of the investors and capitalists. And you also have this invisibilized, often gendered and racialized class who's doing a lot of the maintenance work to make things smooth. So what we do in this go is um, we take the monetary value that is gained through the livelihood work that these organizations can do, the goods and services, what you have on the market, and we distribute it for the voluntary work and for the care work. This means that each disco has a conversation 
like, okay, we're doing the productive work, we're doing the management, and we're, do and we're cleaning the toilets. What is fair for everyone? Okay, not with the uh, predetermined notions that we have. So ultimately, this can lead us to federation. My critique of scaling, um, we agree on all things, but uh, I have a pet peeve with the word because to me scaling is a little bit the mentality of colonialism. It's like we have something small and we just make it bigger because we're wonderful and we raise any other possible cultural interventions and sensibilities. So for me, it's important that we replicate and that we replicate according to our environment and the things that we need. And there are many things in common. Rice farmers in Colombia and rice farmers in Vietnam will have certain things to talk about and they will have huge differences. If we share information openly, we can take leverage of those things. So this goal offers an economic syntax so we can have these conversations within our organizations and we can talk. And talking is information and information is also economics, value systems, where we put our effort, where we put our resources, whether they're commodified or decommodified. We are also developing the social and technological tools to be able to do so. And ultimately, it's about mutual recognition. It's like, oh, you're a disco, you're doing something similar. What can I learn from you? What can I learn from how we are different? How can we help each other? So if you dig all that and you want to know more, just go to disco.coop, which is our website. And there's all sorts of materials and videos. You can read our publications. If you're new to Disco, I recommend going to basics.disco.coop. And this is our introductory interactive website. And yes, that's the website, my website, where you can find me in the interwebs, etc. Thank you. Thank you, Sarko.